Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Great things are coming your way. I want to declare this. New things are being birthed off in your life. Great things are being birthed off in your life in spite of the distress that you see in this world. Watch my video last week as I was talking about this and go into the details and receive by faith that birth forth, a time of birthing forth is coming your way in spite of the distress that you see in this world. You know what? As I was seeking the Lord for this week's message, the Lord just spoke this to me. Very simple. The Lord just spoke this to me. Tell my people, don't compare yourself with others. Now, if you look at this, uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 to 5, I begin with the easy to read version first because it's so simple and so clear. It says, don't compare yourself with others. Just look at your own work to see if you have done anything to be proud of. Proud here is a good kind of proud. Yeah? So look at your own work, not other people's work. You must accept, you must each accept the responsibilities that are yours. Now in New Living Translation, it's written this way. Pay careful attention to your own work. See, again, own work. Not pay careful attention to other people's work, other people's ministries, or other people's family. For then, you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. Oh, I like this. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. People of God, you know what? One fastest way of discouraging yourself and getting trapped in envy, in jealousy, is when you start to compare yourself with others. Whether it's person with person, family with family, your career with somebody's career, even your God-given ministry with somebody's ministry. You see, God has a specific plan for each of us. If you look at the slide here, God has a specific timing for each of us. Time and season. Everybody has their respective timing of the Lord. For some, it's a time where they are in the time of rest. For some others, they are in the time of launching. For some others, they are in the time of running. Yeah. Now, you don't look at one another. You look at what God has. What is His specific plan, blueprint for your life? And you'll be fine. You'll be all right. You won't fulfill uh, that specific plan or timing of God by looking at others. Now, whether it's comparing one person with another person, one family with another family, one career with another career, or even one ministry with another ministry. Now, I, I tell you what, no two persons or no two families, careers, either the path of your career, timing of your career, or even ministries, the path of your career, the timing of your career, or, or your ministries is exactly the same. So people of God, it is so important. This is the Lord's message for you in this time. Instead of looking at others, count your blessings. Not the blessing of someone else, count your blessings. Now, you, you can be happy for somebody's achievements, of course. Yeah, you can be happy for others. The Lord says, for one another, love one another. In fact, you can be happy for one another. No problem. In fact, you should be. But let the Lord take over your life and your situation now. Give the devil no opportunity to discourage you from the plans and purposes that he has for you. Know that all you need is in Christ. He is more than enough for you. Keep focusing on the Lord, people of God. Keep focusing on the Lord and His plans, His blueprints, His purposes for you. And you'll be all right. So don't compare yourself with others. And that's how you get your perfect peace. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says this, You will keep Him. God will keep you in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. Perfect peace. Shalom, whose mind, your mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. Now, the word stayed here, uh, interestingly, samak in Hebrew, it means your mind is rested on God. Your mind is set on God. Your mind is standing fast on what God has for you. And your mind is sustained on all that God has spoken to you to be and to do. Remember, there are no two persons who is exactly the same. Even twins, 
are not the same. Now, the word trust here is batak in Hebrew. It means because you put your confidence in God, because you are secure, you are sure, you are careless. When your confidence, security, and surety, in other words, the state of being sure, is in God, it doesn't matter what other people say or think about you, you couldn't care less. In other words, not concerned or affected at all what others say or think. So people of God, this applies whether it's person to person, family to family, your career and somebody's career, your ministry and somebody's ministry. So as you can see from the slide here, as you can see by now, comparing yourself with others is a joy stealer. It's a joy killer. It's a joy destroyer. Still kill, destroy. It robs you from living your own life and living it more abundantly. Now, John chapter 10, verse 10 says this. Jesus says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. Now, the word abundantly here is perisos in Greek. It means exceedingly abundantly above all that you think, all that you ask of. Hallelujah. Beyond measure. People of God, don't let anyone or the devil rob you of your joy. Don't allow the devil this opportunity to steal your joy, kill your joy, destroy your joy. Focus on what God has for you. Because if you lose your joy, you will lose your strength to carry on in life. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says what? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. It means without the joy, you will not have the strength to carry on to fulfill all that God has for you. Amen. So people of God, be faithful to follow God's specific plan for you. Be faithful to follow God's specific instruction blueprint for you. Not look at others, not comparing yourself with others, but look at what God has for you. And God is going to reward you and God is going to bless all that you put your hands on. Be faithful in what God has given to you. Don't look left, don't look right, stay focused on his path and in his timing and season for you. Amen. So are you ready, people of God, for some examples in the Bible? John chapter 21, verse 20 to 22. Now, uh, that was after the breakfast by the sea. Yeah? Uh, and uh, Jesus has already resurrected and he appeared to his disciples. So then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, John, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing John, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. In other words, you know what Jesus was saying? None of your business. Now, you see, we can sometimes be so concerned or quote-unquote interested in what other people are doing or what other people have that we actually lose sight of our own paths that God has given us. People of God, you see, with all due respect to Peter, now Peter is a great apostle, great man. Yeah, but at that time, uh, we all tend to be like that. We all can sometimes be like that. We all tend to look at others. What about that person? What about that ministry? Uh, we, we tend to just uh, uh, look around at others and try to compare. Do not do that. Focus on what God has spoken. Yeah, it's, it's not to say that you cannot learn from people. Yes, we keep humbling ourselves. We can learn from people. But we don't compare so much so that we become so uh, discouraged or if we are better than somebody, so-called better than somebody, uh, we feel so good. If we are not, and we see that somebody is doing better, quote-unquote, and you feel so down. People of God, be secure in the Lord. Be sure in the Lord. Amen. So you see, with all due respect to Peter, just before that, uh, just before he said this, the Lord had actually, in fact, given Peter a wonderful path and calling in life. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep, follow him. Do you love me? You know that I do. Three times 
He denied Jesus in the past. Now three times, Peter was being restored by Jesus. See, people of God, Peter received a wonderful plan from God, from Jesus. So if he were to walk his path, he will do great things for the Lord. He will do great exploits for the Lord. So there is the same with all of us here. We focus on what God has spoken to you. Keep running our path. Yeah. And you will do great exploits in the kingdom of God as well. Amen. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, 12, New Living Translation, make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business, working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Then be people who are not believers, they see you, they will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. So, people of God, now I, I just want you to imagine this. You know? uh, this is quite common in the neighborhoods, for example. Uh, Im imagine uh, someone just peeping at his neighbor. I hope that's not you. Peeping at the neighbor through the window and say, Whoa, that neighbor just brought in a BMW, new BMW 7 Series. Wow. I wonder how he got the money, huh? I wonder uh, 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 how he managed that. Huh? Could it be he just hit a, a jackpot? Could, he, could it be he just uh, uh, won a first prize lottery? You see, people tend to speculate a lot. And people tend to put thoughts in people's lives or minds. Hey, mind your own business. Now, your part, people of God, be faithful to what He has given to you. Now, it's a beautiful parable here, something that we can learn a lot. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 18, I'm reading from English Standard Version here. For it, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away, he who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. Wow, that's great. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more, but he who had received, alas, the one talent went and dug in the ground, hid his master's money. He didn't reproduce from that one talent that he has. Now, the word talents here, uh, in Greek is talenton. Now, the, in the context here, the word talents here in this scripture, part of the scripture, is a certain weight or money, uh, a sum of money. One talent is basically like one bag of silver, which is equivalent to about 75 pounds or about 34 kilograms. Now, though these talents in this parable speaks about sum of money, but this parable applies the same for any of our life's resources. It could be be faithful in your time, how you use your time, be faithful in your abilities or natural talents that you have, be faithful in your spiritual gifts that God has given you, be faithful in your calling in life. People of God, different people have different callings. Some are called into this, some are called into the marketplace, some are called to the mission field, to the land far away. Some are called in the city, some are called in the village. Yeah? So we are not to compare with one another. As long as each one is faithful according to whatever that God has given them and dealt to them, His grace. Some are the eyes, some are the ears, some are the hands, some are the legs. The hands cannot look down on the, on the legs. Yeah? That's what Apostle Paul said. So let me continue here. Matthew chapter 25, verse 19 to 25 says this, now after a long time, now the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, 
bringing five talents more. Wow. Saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. You know what the master said? The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who also had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, he who also who had received the one talent, what happened? So he came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. He was afraid. This guy with one talent, he was afraid. A lot of fear. He didn't uh, 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 dare to use that talent. It is the same with our lives today. Do not fear. Whatever that God has given to you, the grace of God, use it. So be faithful in what God has given to you and more will be given. This parable isn't just about being faithful in what God has given to you, but the Lord showed me it's also about not comparing yourself with others. Let me give you one illustration here. One talent, yeah, two talents, five talents. Now, by the way, you know, the master came back and looked at the one talent, the guy with one talent. You know what was his response? Uh, definitely, he didn't say good, faithful servant. No, well done, good and faithful servant. He was saying, you wicked and lazy guy. One talent, two talents, five talents. Say, if you are given two talents, yeah, and you are faithful in it, and you get two more talents because you are being faithful, Praise the Lord. Very good. But do you realize in life, we humans tend to sometimes compare ourselves with others? If say one has two talents, he feels good when he looks at the one given one talent. But he feels unfair when he looks at the one given five talents. In other words, some people who already have two talents would envy those who have five talents. Don't. Otherwise, you lose your joy. So people of God, each one of you is given gifts, talents, abilities, calling, even authority according to God's grace for each of you. You see, what matters is your faithfulness in what's been given to you by the Lord. He will know how to reward you. He will know how to prosper and bless you. Amen. Now, look at the slide right now. For example, let's talk about ministry work now. Say, yeah, a minister of God who is very much unknown to the world, but he's faithfully and quietly doing his ministry work, being called by the Lord in pastoring a small group, just a small group of religious in a faraway land. But yet, he was touching lives. He was ministering to these religious faithfully. Now, you know what? No glamour. No limelight, no neon lights, no celebrity status, of course. Yeah, I can move, I can go on and on. No Instagram followers. Yeah, uh, not many people put all the like. Yeah, in the YouTube, if he has any. He was living in a wooden hut with very basic infrastructure. Imagine that. Now, I ask you this question. Do you think his reward in heaven is lesser than another pastor who has a huge following in Instagram? My answer is 100% no. Because it is not about uh, uh, where you are put. It's not about how glamorous you are. It's not about uh, uh, um, how much people look up to you and say, oh, that's an anointed man, anointed woman. But it is about the faithfulness in God's calling in your life that counts. Now, people of God, there's a place for each and every one of you in God's kingdom. Seek Him and you will find it. There's no such thing as you are totally useless in this world. And of course, in the kingdom of God. You will at least have one talent. 
you will at least have one ability. You will at least have one spiritual gift that you can use even now. And you can be a blessing. I want to declare upon you, I want to say this to you right now who is watching. You are a blessing. Don't fear. Don't hide that talent. Use it for the glory of God. I want to say this one more time. You are a blessing. Amen. So before I end this message, I want to pray this prayer for you today. Oh Lord, I pray for all your beloved who is watching here, that they will walk in your specific plan, blueprint for each one of them, and not look left or right, or comparing themselves with others. They will be faithful in what they have been called to be, and called to do in their respective life. They will be faithful to walk in every time and season you have in their lives. And as they are being faithful in all this, you, O oh Lord, will know how to work things out for each of them, according to your grace given to each one. And you will also say to them, Well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, Amen.